Hello and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Um, I have been requested to speak about the rise of Christianity inside the Roman Empire, but you can't really tackle this subject in one go. You have to go round it a little bit. So basically I'm going to first read the critique from the history page and critique them on my own methods, the rise or the fall of the Western Roman Empire. Um, because this will give you a better indication of what sits as why the Roman Empire became Christianization and much of its other factors that led to the Christianization of Western Roman Empire. So let's get started. The, the eight reasons why Rome fell. The invasion by barbarian tribes, the most straightforward theory before Western Roman collapse, pins the fall on a string of military losses sustained against outside forces. Now, in my own opinion, I don't necessarily agree this was enough to bring down what was, in essence, the greatest empire humanity has ever had in Western civilization. Um, in a nutshell, that's not plausible, in my opinion. Um... Rome had tangled with Germanic tribes for centuries, but by the 300s, barbarian groups like the Goths had encountered beyond the, Europe, the Empire's borders. The Romans weathered a Germanian uprising in the late 4th century, but in the 410, the Visigoth king Alaric successfully sacked the city of Rome. The Empire spent the next several decades under constant threat before the Eternal City was raided again in 455, this time by the Vandals. Finally, in 476, the Germanic leader Odysseus staged a revolt and deposed the Emperor Romulus Augustus. From there on, no Roman emperor would ever be ruled from a post in Italy, leading many to cite 476 as the year the Western Empire suffered its death blow. Now, yes and no, there are multiple factors that led towards Western Rome collapsing, none the least being the fact that their eastern holdings and much of the eastern holdings assets have been separated by Constant Constantine when he split the empire in half to make it more manageable. But by making it more manageable, they lacked the manpower and support that they were expecting to get from each other. Reason two, economical troubles and over-reliance uh, over on slave labour. Even as Rome was under attack from outside forces, it was crumbling from within. Thanks to a severe financial crisis, constant wars and overspending had significantly lightened imperial coffers, and oppressive taxation and influence had widened the gap between rich and poor. In the hopes of avoiding the tax ban, many members of the wealthy class had even fled to the countryside and set up independent fiefdoms. At the same time, the emperor was rocked by a labour deficit. Rome's economy depended heavily on slaves to till its fields and works as craftsmen, and its military might had traditionally provided fresh influx of conquests, people to put to work. But when expeditions grounded to a halt in the second century, Rome's supply of slaves and other war treasures began to dry up. A further blow came in the fifth century when the Vandals claimed, uh, claimed North Africa and began dis disrupting the empire's trade by prowling the Mediterranean as pirates. With its economy faltering and its commercial and agricultural products in decline, the empire began to lose its grip on Europe. This is one of the main factors. They had massive economical issues. They couldn't hold on to their African, uh, um, much of their North African holdings, and the riches in North Africa and uh, in Eastern um, the Empire were divided as the Eastern Roman Emperor basically severed the two empires in half when he became the heir to the throne. The rise of the Eastern Empire. Fate of the Western Roman Empire was partially sealed in the late third century when Emperor Diocles uh, Diocles divided the empire into two halves: the Western Empire seated in the city of Milan and the Eastern Empire in Byzantine, later known as Constantinople. This divide was necessary, relatively speaking, but there wasn't a divide of natural resources. You see, Emperor uh, um, Diocles kept most of his heirs and much of the bulk of the empire's wealth, finance, power in what the, the city, of, the town of Byzantium, that would eventually become the, 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 the world, the city at the world's edge, better known as Constantinople or Istanbul, depending on who you're asking. The, as the gulf widened, the largely Greek-speaking Eastern Empire grew wealthy, whilst the Latin-speaking Western descendants into economic crisis. Most importantly, the strength of the Eastern Empire served to divert barbarian invasions of the West, because a lot of the military legions and old units were stored in the, in, 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 in the East, deliberately to fend off many of the other barbarian tribes before the rise of Islam were left vulnerable. The Western political structure would finally disintegrate into the 5th century, but the Eastern Empire endured in some form or another for a thousand years beyond, being overwhelmed by the Ottoman Empire in the 1400s. This is very, very true. And, I, and, and the most of the reasons that I give to this is because the Western Empire was stripped of many of its elite units. Many of the elite units went west, so the east so the west, went east. So the Western Empire had to build itself up again. And 
with very little finances, very, very inability to expand, can't expand against the Balk Balklands, the height of the, of, of the Eastern Empire. So there were some serious civilizations here. Four, at its height, the Roman Empire stretched from the Atlantic Ocean all the way to the Euphrates River in the Middle East, but its grandeur may have also been its downfall. With such a vast territory to govern, the empire faced an, an administration and lo logistic nightmare. Even with its excellent road systems and carrier systems of messengers, the managed holdings, Rome struggled to marshal enough troops, resources to defend its frontiers from local rebellions and outside attacks. And by the second century, Emperor Hadrian had been forced to build his famous wall in Britain just to keep the Picts out, the Picts and Scots and the various other northern barbarians. And they weren't even numerous. It was just because he lacked manpower and resources to be everywhere. Government corruption and political instability. The government corruption in Rome during the um, second to fifth century was horrific. Absolute. I mean, if you think the Senate in America is bad now, these guys were still worse. If Rome's sheer size made it difficult to govern, ineffective and inconsistent leadership and only served to magnitude the problem. Being a Roman emperor had always been a particularly dangerous job, but during the term of the second and third century, it nearly became a death sentence. Civil war thrusted the empire into chaos and more than 20 men took the throne in the span of only 75 years. The Praetorian guards were selling the role of emperor to people, literally bidding to make money for themselves. The arrival of the Huns and the Barbarian tribes. The Barbarians' attacks on Rome practically stemmed from the mass migration caused by the Hun invasion of Europe. Yes and no. Rome took in many of these barbarian tribes. So this idea that, that, that the Huns were responsible for the population pressure. No, in fact, the population influx of Germanian tribes were a benefit to the empire. Because, I mean, they did make un horrific slavery offers for dog meat for, for, for the hunt for the Germanians who were starving and the Goths. Um, eventually, the Goths revolted and led to a massive insurrection in 378, shocked Rome and negotiated a flimsy peace with the barbarians. But this truce unraveled in 410, where the Goth king Alaric moved west and sacked Rome. With the Western Empire weakened, Germanian tribes like the Vendels and the Saxons were able to surge across its borders and occupy Britain, Spain and North Africa. Christianity and the loss of traditional values. This argument I don't necessarily agree with. It claims that Christianity devolved civic pride in um, the empire because the empire was granted, uh, the empire was the thing that you held your pride in. You had civic pride, you had military pride, you had pride of the emperors. The emperors were near deific, deific themselves. They say that this particular argument claims that the Christianity shifted all the focus to God to Abraham, to Allah as a Muslim man. I don't necessarily think that was it. I think the economical, military um, and corruption were the most better, most most crippling effects. But this is where the rise, the decline of Rome dovetailed with the spread of Christianity. And some have argued that the rise of the new faith helped contribute to the emperor's fall. I don't agree with that. The Edict of Milan legalised Christianity in 313 and lately became the state religion in 380. These decrees ended centuries of persecution, but they may have eroded the traditional Roman value system. Christianity displaced the polytheistic Roman religion, which viewed emperors as having a divine status, and also shifted focus away from the glory of the state and onto the sole deity. Meanwhile, popes and other church leaders took to see their involvement inside the religion, inside politics, also muddled an already complicated matter with the imperial senate. The weaken of the Roman legions, which is the last part, for most of its history, Rome's military was in envy of the ancient world. No, it wasn't the envy, it was the world's superpower at its time. I mean, they did trade with China on the flimsy part. And you've got to remember, in these early centuries, travel between China and Europe was extremely difficult, hazardous, and took months. Unable to recruit enough soldiers from the Roman citizenry, emperors like Diocletius and Constantine began hiring foreign mercenaries to prop up their armies. The ranks of the legions eventually swirled with Germanic Goths and other barbarians, so much so the Romans began using the Latin word barbarus in place of soldati. Whilst these Germanic soldiers of fortune proved to be fierce warriors, they also had little or no loyalty to the empire, and their power-hungry officers often turned against their Roman employers. In fact, many of the barbarians who sacked the city of Rome and brought down the Western Empire had earned their military stripes while serving in the Roman legions. This is unsurprising. Military, financial and corruption were the major benefactors. To say that Christianity was responsible for the fall of the Western Empire is fantasy, in my opinion. If anything, it might have saved it if they had managed to sort out the rest of its corruption. 
church leaders, early church leaders, popes, bishops, wanting to interfere in the Western Roman Empire's rulership, that had a massive impact as well. And um, we're all already dealing with the senatorial corruption. You're dealing with multiple factors. Plus, yes, there was some pressure from outside forces, but I don't think it was as vast as everyone thinks it is. Historically, I would probably put it down to corruption, military uh, inaptness, and political, basically, um, will, power, and their lack of willingness to invest in, in modern technology. Anyway, that's my 10 minutes of that. I'm now going to do the rise of Christianity during the Roman provinces itself. Alhamdulillah.